This is going to be the build video for the RC outboard. I'm going to try to show you uh, how to put it together from start to finish. And I'm going to start with showing you the 3D prints you're going to need first. So all the 3D prints are available on my website. And you can get those through um, my website. Uh, link will be on the screen now. Or a, you can go into the description to find the uh, STL files. So I just wanted to take a second to say that I'm starting a Patreon. Uh, this is all new territory to me, so I'm trying new things. But I plan on releasing some machining drawings and assembly drawings. So stuff like for the horizontal and vertical shafts, the dimensions and things like that. You can see one of the drawings on the screen here uh, for the RC outboard. And then I w also want to do some Zoom support meetings where you guys can ask me questions. And we can talk about any problems you're having with the uh, designs or anything like that. And then also I'm going to release uh, STL files, so stuff like my RC boats, uh, RC F1 boat, um, the monoholes I'm working on, and then maybe we can do some like custom stuff for the Patreon members only. So uh, I just started that, and I'm uploading content now, so uh, go check it out. Thanks. We start with the first um, 3D print we're going to need. This is the lower unit, so this is where all the bearings are going to go. You can see I've already installed the whale tail. This just clips on, it just pushes in. Uh, I'm going to show you some more about the brass inserts and things, but then you got the cowling. Then you've got two of these hex millimeter or uh, hex uh, shaft couplers. Let's go like this. Okay. You have one top hat spacer, 3D printed. And then finally, you've got the hatch cover for the lower unit, and that goes right here. One of the things, uh, please excuse the beeping noises in the background, that's my, uh, my 3D printers going at it, so I, uh, I never stop running those machines, so can't, can't, can't let up on them. As far as tools for this build, uh, I have a set of metric Allen keys, a pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of end cutters, these are from my Ender 3. I've got essentially what is a, a drift, this is a quarter inch, it's actually a quarter inch um, shaft extension, but you know, any like blunt nose drift type piece so you, so you can hammer on this. And then I've got a really small hammer. This is kind of a cute hammer I got from Harbor Freight, but any hammer will do. So basically what we're gonna be using this for is kind of banging the bearings into place and then doing one of these kind of motions. Um, more on that, you'll see later. So put those tools to the side. I'm also gonna be using my drill. And for people in America, I have a set of number drill bits uh, for people outside the U.S., you're going to want a metric set of precision drill bits. Um, specifically, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later, which ones you'll need, but most likely you'll need like a 3 millimeter bit, uh, maybe a 3.1, and I think that should be really all you're going to need. So let's start with the first things. So these are the bevel gears that make this work. So these are brass 20 tooth, I believe, uh, 0 0.5 module brass bevel gears. So this holds a pair for 45 degrees like so. So you got those. Those have, um, these come with like steel set screws, but I put my own stainless ones in. So trying to keep it as marine, marine friendly as possible. Um, next let's go into the shafts. So these are custom. I custom cut these up, but I make these from three millimeter round stock I get off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for these. And these are special because they've got um, flats. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but they've got flats at either end. Kind of see that. So I believe this is this shaft is 56 millimeters. This is the vertical one. So it's 56 millimeters long and it's got the flats at either end. Okay, and the flats are about, on one side you need an eight millimeter long flat. And on the other side, you need a six millimeter long flat. So that's the vertical shaft. And then, horizontal shaft, what you're gonna need to do is this is 52 millimeters long, okay? It's made from three millimeter again, stainless steel um, precision rod I get off of Amazon, link in the description. And what's special about this, a couple, there's three features to it. We have an M3 by 0 0.5 thread on the end, 12 millimeters long, okay? And you do that, you'll need a die so a tap and die set will have these, a metric tap and die. You put these inside of a, um, it's a die, called a die wrench. And then basically you can thread these. And you need 12 millimeters long 
of full thread, okay? Then in the center, you've got a six millimeter long flat. And I'm just looking at my drawing right now. So from the far edge of the threaded side, you need to go 25 millimeters to the start of this edge. So it's easier if I use my, my tweezers. So from, from the edge to the start of the flat right here is 25 millimeters. And then you need to make a six millimeter long flat, okay? And then the very end of the other side has a six millimeter flat all the way to the end. You can see that there. And they don't need to be on the same axis. Like, see how these are both on the same plane? Um, I just do that. It's easier for me to do. I've got some jigs I make um, so I can machine these. So then that's that. those two components. Um, next, we've got our four of these stainless steel three millimeter width uh, by three millimeter ID by seven millimeter OD. So it's commonly referred to as a 373 bearing. Okay, and these are stainless 440C, so they're good for, for, for water. They are only shielded. I've had trouble finding sealed bearings, but I think these are fine. You know, we just lubricate them every run. So you need four of these. And you could use regular steel ball, ball bearings. Um, you know, they'll rust, but again, you could you could just take the whole thing apart. If they're cheap enough, you could throw the, all the bearings away, buy brand new bearings. And that's the beauty of this. You can just keep reprinting it. Like if you ruin one or you don't, it doesn't run right, you can totally reprint it for pretty cheap. So I think that was one of the attractive features of this. Besides the bearings, um, Actually, let's keep talking about some of the more intricate pieces. This is a three millimeter shaft. I guess I call it a shaft dog, but it's got these, uh, I guess, drive teeth. And so it's got a set screw. So you put this on the horizontal shaft and then you tighten it. And then this, these teeth are what interface with the, um, with the propeller. So let me grab a propeller real quick. Show you what that looks like. Okay, here's one of the props that I use. So for the outboard, you know, I think the fun of this is you can experiment with it and play with it and make it your own. But I have found the best performance, um, and I'll show you the, mo the motor, some more specs on that, but I found the best performance using a 32 millimeter diameter, okay? Two blade prop, these are cheap. Nylon, a little cheaper, but I mean, cheaper than a, a CNC to aluminum one, you might pay 30 bucks, which I think is a little overkill. But if you're getting high, if you want high performance, I guess you can get that. But 32 millimeter, 1.4 inch, I think it's 1.4 inch pitch, which is weird because they do 32 millimeters on the di diameter, but they switched to American for the pitch. And then it's got a three millimeter through hole. And then you see how it's got these matching teeth for our drive gear, for our drive dog. So those just fit together like this. See how perfect those go? And that's what gives you that uh, positive traction for the prop uh, next let's talk about some of the fasteners I have a three millimeter uh, by 25 millimeter socket head stainless steel cap screw then I have uh, two there's I have two of these two sets of these put them in my hand this is a three millimeter nut with a six millimeter long matching three millimeter set screw. It's got an Allen key, Allen socket drive in the end. Okay, I got two of those, two sets of those. I have a three millimeter nylock screw. This is a nylon insert in the end. Keeps it from walking out. This is how we secure the prop to the horizontal shaft. Okay. I've got a plain, another plain uh, three millimeter nut. cheap three millimeter washer. Nothing special about that, nothing precision. Two M2 by, uh, I think they are, I wanna say they're six millimeters long. So they're tiny, these are Phillips heads. You can use whatever you want. I like the Phillips heads because they're a little lower profile on the heads. These are for securing the lower unit cover. So those fit in those two holes. Okay. Oops. Next, we've got, these are, if you've never seen these before, these are heat inserts. Actually, let me pick them up with the tweezers to show you. 
These are pretty amazing. If you don't have a set of these, I highly recommend you get a set. I've got a big box of them. And it comes with all sorts of different sizes. This is a metric kit. But essentially what you do is you take a, a soldering iron and you make a hole for these. Okay, so like what we've got on the lower unit. And then you set them in to place, like so. And then you push them in with a soldering iron. And then what you get out of that, so I've got two of those, by the way. What you get is they go perfectly flush and you can put reliable, reusable threads in 3D prints. So that's pretty amazing. All right, so then I've got a pile of these. I've got 10 in total. These are precision three millimeter ID um, shims and they're 0.2 millimeters thick. So they're, they're ultra thin. And what, why I'm saying just a pile, I've got 10 of them, is because you're gonna need to shim up the bearings in the bevel gears and I'll go into that later, but essentially what we're gonna we're gonna have to do at the end is we're gonna have to get nice um, uh, interaction between these gear teeth, so the meshing. So we'll more on that later. Let's see, we're almost done. Here I have, you're gonna need in total um, 12, I've got a little more than that, 12. Uh, these are neodymium magnets. So they're six millimeter diameter by two millimeter thickness. So you can see there. You can see it's walking back. So I've got 12 of those. So the last thing we have is a clevis pin. This is a three millimeter by... 30 millimeters long. What I do is I just switch two of the leads on this. 